are extraterrestrials in hibernation. That is not dead which can eternal lie. This is the rather dramatic title of a 2017 paper which seeks to explain the apparent absence of aliens in the universe. The estivation hypothesis argues that highly advanced extraterrestrials may exist in a form of hibernation, and this is the reason for their lack of communication thus far. But why did they do this? Where can we find them? And what are they waiting for? Let's find out together. As we explore the question, are extraterrestrials in hibernation? The Absence Fermi's paradox deems an explanation for the absence of alien life in the universe necessary, since it's difficult to reconcile the high statistical likelihood of extraterrestrial existence with the lack of evidence of it thus far. The starting point of Fermi's argument is that since there are billions of sun-like stars in the galaxy, many must be older than the solar system, since our star is a relative baby at just 4.6 billion years old. It is also deemed likely that some systems will contain Earth-like planets, with a 2013 Kepler mission suggesting a possible 11 billion Earth analog worlds in existence within the habitable zones of sun-like stars throughout the Milky Way. But is it a case of copycat, copycat, don't know what you're looking at? Not exactly. If the Earth model of development is typical, a small proportion of Earth analogs may have developed life, Intelligent life would spring from an even smaller percentage of these worlds, and given their head start of millions or perhaps billions of years, a tiny fraction of said life forms may by now have reached a level of technological advancement sufficient to allow interstellar travel. Despite the ever diminishing probability we've just described, the fact that our galaxy contains between 100 and 400 billion suns means this tiny fraction could still equate to hundreds or thousands of civilizations in our galaxy alone. So, where the heck are they all? Fermi's final assertion is that the Milky Way could be traversed in a few million years by intelligent beings if they persisted long enough without murdering each other to shreds. So it's therefore puzzling that we have neither made contact nor witnessed evidence of their existence. The Answer Various explanations have been posed in response to Fermi's paradox, with many decidedly negative in their outlook. Some believe it is within the nature of intelligent life to annihilate itself. For example, in 2017, John G. Sotos attempted to calculate the lifetime of advanced civilizations which have developed biotechnology, concluding that once a species gains the ability to manipulate biological processes, they exist on average for no more than a few decades or centuries beyond this point. After 80 times this figure, only one in a septillion civilizations is deemed likely to survive. That's a one in a million billion billion chance. I'm no poker player, but I don't like those odds. Biotechnological threats are just one of the many ways an intelligent civilization may cause its own demise and self-destruction itself is but one of several events which form part of the Great Filter. The Great Filter argues the reason extraterrestrials haven't made themselves known is that each civilization must progress through a series of challenges in order to survive, and precious few manage to do so. The list begins with being born under the right star system because it turns out cosmic privilege is a thing, despite our joking about it in a previous video. Please don't tell the social justice warriors We'll get letters. Other prerequisites to intelligent civilizations include the development of single-celled life, sexual reproduction, and the intelligence to use tools. Beyond this, said life form must also endure self-caused and external disasters such as nuclear annihilation, asteroid strikes, supervolcanoes, gamma ray bursts, and the invention of the most polluting activity of all, social media. When all is said and done, our continued existence on Earth owes much to great fortune. But other civilizations may not have been so lucky, and that's if they even exist at all. The Great Filter may be redundant if life itself is more scarce than we think, with the Rare Earth hypothesis suggesting that our planet is a very special place indeed, and not special in a bad way like the kind that eats paste at the back of the class and ends up living at home until 30 building Legos in his parents' basement. 
It's also possible that other intelligent species have not arisen yet. And even if they have, the vastness of the universe may make interstellar travel more difficult than we've imagined. There's also the chance that Earth is just a stupid jerk planet that nobody wants to contact yet. Or we live in a simulation controlled by extraterrestrials who don't want us to know that we're trapped. We've explored many of these ideas at Strange Mysteries before, but one we've never considered is the Estivation Hypothesis. This is one of the most positive explanations to the Fermi Paradox, as it asserts not that life is special, and nor is it rare or likely to kill itself. The Estivation Hypothesis tells us that we haven't met aliens yet for the simple reason that they are sleeping. Aw, isn't that just the cutest scientific theory you've ever heard? The Hot Universe Are you watching strange mysteries with your laptop on your groin? Can you feel how warm your junk's getting? You should probably stop microwaving yourself and move to a desk or something. But also, consider how problematic this situation would be if magnified a million times over. I'm not talking about a giant cosmic crotch being superheated by a giant laptop, as entertaining as such an image might be. No, I'm referring to the development of processing technologies to the point where their residual heat becomes a major issue. The magnitude of this heat is considered to be one of the hurdles all technologically advanced species must eventually overcome. As you develop ever fancier technologies, their thermodynamic costs increase due to the huge volumes of information being processed. This may not be too much of an issue up to a certain point, with universal exploration limited yet still possible. But when the temperature of a civilization's technological activities becomes prohibitively high, a solution must be sought if their efforts are to continue. So what's the answer? Giant cooling fan or smash a frigid ice world into the side of your planet? Maybe you could get everyone to blow on it like it's a toasted cheese. Or you could go with the obvious solution, which is to wait for the universe to cool down. A duh, why didn't I think of that? But this is the idea outlined in a paper written by Anders Sandberg and Stuart Armstrong of Oxford University and Belgrade Astronomical Observatory's Milan M. Serkovich, all of whom believe that since information processing is limited by the heat of the universe's background radiation, a sufficiently advanced civilization may choose to wait until its temperature drops to continue. But since this process takes rather a long time, the authors suggest that intelligent extraterrestrial civilizations may choose to take a nap, rather than wait out the trillions of years required. And this is why we haven't met any aliens yet, they're all hibernating until the universe gets cold. The Estivation Hypothesis Our universe will become much colder as time goes on due to its constant expansion. As its contents are spread farther apart and the stars begin to die, the overall temperature of the universe will gradually decrease. Sandberg, Armstrong, and Serkovich calculate that a low-temperature environment could produce a 10 to the power of 30 multiplier of achievable computation. Translation, when the universe gets cold enough, computers can be built which improve upon their previous models by a factor of one non-nillion. That's one followed by 30 zeros, or a thousand billion billion billion. Our modern computers will seem as powerful as a tin of cat food by comparison. So it's no wonder alien life forms may want to sleep their way towards such an era. The paper's authors believe that such advanced civilizations may have already visited as much of the universe as they want to, and have likely fiddled with nature to a point where there's only one thing left to explore – themselves. Internal cultural exploration of the mind, the self, and the history of a race would require huge amounts of processing power. Therefore, ancient powerful civilizations may force dormancy upon themselves until such processing is possible. It's kind of like when we all used to set our MSN messenger status to away. The aliens aren't deliberately avoiding us like those jerks who pretended to be offline, but nor are they ready to communicate at this point in time. However, it's unlikely that said beings exist in what we would understand as a hibernative state. Their bodies aren't all piled up somewhere, jammed with tubes and whatnot. It's thought more likely that these advanced beings exist in digital form having long since disposed of their biological bodies due to their inefficient consumption of resources. Such a race would wish to conserve the universe's finite energy stocks to save it for processing power, 
And the best way to do this is to transfer everyone's consciousness to a matrix-style virtual world. So, if many ancient civilizations exist solely as a digital presence, how could we ever hope to find them? Must we too wait for trillions of years to make contact with an extraterrestrial race? Perhaps not. And we're going to explore how to track down these hibernating extraterrestrials in our bonus video, The Hunt for Dormant Virtual Life. But you can watch over at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, you'll gain access to hundreds of our bonus videos and the Strange Mysteries community. With your contribution helping us to produce new videos and explore brain-bending topics in ever greater detail. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality, visited by only a select few, whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible and in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come.